Hello everyone and welcome back to the third part of the Second Life Dialogue sull'economia circolare. This event is held in conjunction with the Second Life workshop, a week-long workshop where students at the University of Venice are challenged in creating new ideas that fit the future. Today the event will be held in English because we have a quite international panel. My name is Alessio Franconi and uh, in the next 45 minutes or so I will be taking you through a conversation about innovation, technology and circular economy. Today we will be exploring the world of technology, innovation and startups and why those are such critical uh, ingredients for in the transformation, in the transition from a linear to a circular economy. Along the way, we will explore cutting edge technology such as uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, virtual reality, 3D printing, and more. How we choose to use them will change the way we live, work, and behave. I am delighted to be joined to discuss that and more by uh, Sergio Fregoni. Sergio spent almost 10 years at UX Netaporte Group, managing the business innovation and startup initiative for the group. Nowadays, Sergio uh, is a senior lead at IDEO, helping a big organization in their digital transformation and circular, uh, circular innovation efforts. Sergio, it's, a great to, uh, it's great to have you here and welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. I will, we will have also Sveta Maitronovic. She's a psychologist and industrial engineering. She's also a startup mentor at the University of Trento expert in uh, strategic marketing and business development in the circular economy and IT. Sveta, it's also great to have you here and welcome. Thanks. Thanks for inviting. And uh, last but not least, Maximiliano Romero. Max is a designer research specialized in uh, user-centered design and assistive technology. Is an associate professor at U of uh, University of Venice and a lecturer at Polytechnic Polytechnic University of Milan. Max, it's also great to have you here and welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you to all of you. Uh, before we kick things off, uh, I would like to point out that this is not a conversation between us four. Uh, while I will be asking my, uh, my own question to the speakers throughout the section, we, we want to hear from you, the audience. Um, you can post your question in Italian or in English into the chat box uh, underneath uh, the live stream on YouTube or in Zoom. So let's start. Uh, I, would, I would like to start with Sveta. Sveta, um, yeah. what is the value of circular startup and entrepreneurs for the circular linear, uh, for the linear society? Are they really leading the circular innovation? Uh, I think we wouldn't be talking about this uh, topic this much, uh, and I, I don't think you would be investing so much time in organizing this event if this was not the topic. But uh, on the other side, there are, there are um, in important resources where we can inform ourselves about this. So for instance, uh, Ellen Carter for Foundation uh, that says that uh, practically business lead um, uh, collaboration and on the other side, uh, disruptive innovation are uh, the two key factors of uh, the, the prosperous business in circular economy. So um, uh, we, we know that uh, by applying uh, circular business models and uh, circular econom economy principles, we can uh, practically unlock uh, more than 1.8 uh, trillion uh, euros value for Europe's economy. So, and of course the business plays um, a quite significant role, if not a central role uh, in this systemic change uh, towards circularity. And you also mentioned linear to circular uh, shift. This is again, something that drives a value creation. So any system practically that is based on consumption uh, rather than the reuse, recycle, uh, re recycling resources uh, will will face a significant losses in the upcoming future. So, 
And this is exactly why both large corporations, I work with startups and I work in innovative SMEs, uh, I call them also disruptive startups. They are practically dra driving the, the change across the value chain and, uh, and industries uh, by collaborating with uh, suppliers on one side, with customers, and of course, by helping in, in this infrastructure creation uh, towards the change. Um, and yeah, now um, you said that students are quite shy in asking questions, maybe because uh, we don't speak nowadays too much about circular economy, but from today in a like, like five year period, I think it will be a mainstream topic. Uh, so, and this mainstream, mainstream, mainstreamizing phase will definitely include uh, many, many reverse cycle uh, markets, but also rethinking many questions uh, from taxation, from uh, universities, from education, but also innovation and entrepreneurship itself. Thank you. Thank you uh, really much for your answer. And we hear from uh, Sveta that how is the, the point of view from like um, startup world, but I'm also curious about big companies. I, I want, I'm I want to ask to Sergio, what is the role of big companies in the transition to a circular economy and can design make them really circular? Good question. Um, so as you said before, before joining IDEO, I worked um, quite a long time at UX Metaverte Group, which uh, for those who don't know, is a big e-commerce company in Italy. Um, yeah, indeed very big, um, which, which allowed me to, uh, you know, come together with uh, many other big companies and, and build my own uh, point of view. And, and one of those initiatives was uh, the, the CoLab, which, uh, which is a collaborative platform that uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and IDEO together uh, co-designed to allow big corporations to come together and tackle uh, big societal um, challenges, such as the transition to a circular economy uh, together, because um, because the you know the the ecosystem plays what uh, causes the change and and I uh, build my own uh, idea of what is the role of big big corps and I think it goes down to three factors um, like a big corporate has the scale um, to 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 shape the customer behavior um, really like tilting the plane uh, pretty much like uh, governments do um, towards like new ways in, of, of interacting and, and accessing products. Think of think of Amazon and and how they changed forever the expectation of users uh, towards like delivery and access to goods. Right. So big big companies um, can change through the scale uh, this user behavior. Uh, the second one is social responsibility. So most of those companies have um, you know because they're they're so big they they most of the times. Uh, care about uh, the impact that they have on the planet. Whether or not they succeed uh, sometimes is, is another question, but there, is, uh, there are forces inside those companies that you know, push them towards that, that social responsibility. And the third one is money. Uh, I mean, big, big enterprises do have money, which allows uh, them to work with, uh, with startups and, and uh, entities like Sveta to uh, accelerate. The bad news for those big corporates is that they're too good at what they do. And, and this is a, almost a provocation, but um, big enterprises orient all of their operations towards one thing, like doing um, the thing that they were born for very, very well, extremely well, in fact, uh, which um, sometimes poses a threat to them because they might overlook trends and, and, and changes. Uh, which is the reason why those big corporates um, sometimes partner up with startups. Uh, they do have to partner up with startups because it, it's too risky to uh, just, you know, experiment with new business models um, because because consumers don't like uh, phase in, in big enterprises. Also, the risk is too big because you you have a lot of money and scale at risk, right? So. Um, the thing with circular economy, and this experience that I had at the collab, is that the circular economy always requires to put your business model at risk, to 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 pose yourself a question around how your uh, how you exist in the world, because you want to change from ownership to access, you want to switch from consumption to service, you want to decouple your growth 
um, from production. So you want more services, but most of your operations are not aligned in that way. So that's how you, you need, that's the reason why you need partnerships with, with startups. And, and the role of design to answer your second point is crucial because um, you have to understand the customer needs, which you know, are new and, and changed. And you have to understand the context. You have to reorient and make the organization believe that there is a good investment in going towards that direction. And, and, and the role of design and designers is to use creativity um, to see those possibilities because sometimes it's super hard in a big corp to see outside of your bubble. So use creativity to build those stories, to, to believe that there is a different future and that is possible. And then, and then imagine new kind of solutions and build that confidence to, to go towards that. In the end, if you think about clothes, I was coming, I mean, I was selling clothes. Um, so the need of a user is to express themselves with clothes uh, or, or new trends. And, and today, the only option we're given is to buy a lot, a lot of clothes, to stockpile hundreds of garments in our, in our wardrobe. Uh, but it, it doesn't mean to be like that. It doesn't need to be like that. It, it could be that we only access to, uh, to fashion, that we, um, we could accomplish that, that task in a different way, like rent the runaway or other services that allow you to rent clothes rather than owning them, for example. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, Max, the next question is for you. We heard from uh, Sergio and Sveta how um, companies and startups are changing to adapt themselves to the circular economy. My question for you is how do you think technology innovation and design are enabling both startups and companies in this transition? Well, as you... As you say, when you present me, um, circular economy is not my main field, let's say until now, <laughs> because in the next future, everybody of us should uh, know much more about how to make it work. Uh, because it's a question of uh, <laughs> large scale. Everybody should, um, should learn how to apply uh, concepts of, of circular economy in their own uh, fields of, of, of work. Uh, as, I, as, I, as you said before, my field is um, related with the technology and in particular the relation between technology and people and users. And then uh, trying to um, answer your questions, um, I think that Technology is a, is a key factor, could be a key factor. Um, let, me, let me make a, 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 small, um, a small introduction. Um, startups or big companies should be uh, sustainable from the economic point of view, as Sergio uh, said before. Then uh, consider to change the, um, the, the business model, it's quite complicated. I think, I think more for people who, uh, for companies who, who have a, a business model, a very old business model, let's say. Probably it's easier for uh, startups to start with a, a new um, idea about how to live in a sustainable way without uh, a big impact in the, in the, in, in the environmental uh, the, from the environmental point of view, in, in, in a broad view, let's say. In my opinion, at this moment, one of the most important problem is the um, separation in between real economy and finance, uh, and, 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 and let's say the concept of, of money. You know? uh, if we take in consideration, for example, the development of Bitcoin, uh, since uh, I think it was uh, 2009 uh, when uh, Bitcoin was uh, born. Uh, and the, the change at this moment was 1.3 Bitcoins for each dollar. And at, that, uh, at this moment, it's more or less uh, uh, $8,000 for each Bitcoin. In, from my point of view, uh, this is a, 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 some demonstration about the difference between the real economy and the finance. 
then companies and um, uh, more frequently big companies uh, live in the in the in the field of finance, not in the real economy. Uh, quotation of the big companies are um, uh, unreal many times, unreal from the, uh, considering the real economy. Then it, this introduction is to explain how big is the problem, how, how uh, broad is the, the, uh, the quantity of variables that enter in a, the concept of, of circular economy. Then, of course, designers have a role in this, in this uh, situation. And I think that the role mainly is uh, regarding to uh, use the technology to inform and to, uh, in some way, uh, push the critical consumption. Uh, to help uh, people to uh, take in consideration which is the impact of each um, choice. Uh, then when you buy a product, when you buy close a uh, product in, in, in East Asia for two euros, you need to know what happened, how it's possible to, to buy a, I don't know, t-shirt with two, two euros. Who pay? Who pay the difference? Um, then I think that at this moment, uh, regarding product design field, one of the big uh, opportunities is digital fabrication and the possibility to uh, may uh, may use to 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 use the um, distribute uh, distribute uh, production in order to avoid um, the the the, the, the uh, let's say uh, well known. Uh, um, strategy to, to produce, which is the mass production, and focus in a product that are related with uh, only um, small production and uh, diffuse in near, uh, near to the, uh, the place in which the, the client decide to buy this product. Then, then my, my idea is that the role of product design in this context could be related with um, use as much as possible the uh, concept of uh, digital fabrication to avoid big productions. I think that uh, from our point of view, it's very important to um, well known this uh, opportunity in order to use in the best in the best way. Thank you, Max. Uh, obviously, you you were talking about uh, technical strategies, but uh, another question for you, uh, how designer through the use of technology can better facilitate the user uh, journey in order to enhance the circular material flow? As I said before, I think that a key, a key point is to uh, use the designer's uh, capability to um, inform users. I think that uh, products should tell her history, <laughs> uh, should um, teach in some way uh, the final user, the history of the product. Then this is, um, this give the, 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 the consumers to take a decision about uh, what kind of, of product they uh, decide to buy. I think, um, I think that um, designing product that in some way could uh, explain, which is the interior process, not only uh, since the creation, but also what happened after uh, after the the, uh, the final of the uh, their, their life. No? What what happened? How is possible to um, stress the, the the product until the end, or you use or um, designing since the beginning what will happen after the, 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 um, the death of the product. Okay, thank you, Max, again. So let's stay uh, with the user, Sergio. I want to ask to you, what can we learn from the user through uh, technology in order to implement the circularity? Um, 
I think I'm gonna basically connect to what Max have just said around um, the heritage or history of, of the product. So there, um, we, with a couple of stories about projects uh, I've been working at um, both at Ux and before and and then uh, today at Audio. Um, so it was these projects I, I worked at for quite a few years, um, which was around this idea of how. Um, how, how could we get more information about products beyond the point of sale? So something um, maybe not many know is that, um, you know, beyond the point of sale, which is the transaction, you, you go in a store and you buy something, uh, companies don't know much about their products. So they know a lot up until that point because they, they have to optimize their operations up until that point. But after the product is sold, um, nobody knows what happens, and and it, it's an incredible um, business opportunity. And, and and so we came up with this question, and um, we we started to think about what are those services that we could create if we had a better way to track the usage of those garments. And we started uh, thinking about this idea of a digital wardrobe and digital identity of garments and how we could track down how those garments are being used in the real world. And so that was back in, in the, you know, back in the days when I was working at Ux. Um, we started to think about RFIDs in, you know, embedded in the garments, um, you know, knowing um, the digital identity of the garment because that, that would come attached to the garment through the RFID. And then thinking about a network of uh, RFID antennas that could read those uh, IDs and, and track the usage. So think about, um, I don't know, like how garments are being matched together in the real life or uh, how many blue t-shirts are left unworn uh, this year in the closets, which might become valuable assets for the second-hand market or uh, even to optimize production. So think about, for example, like it's been three years since, um, you know, mama jeans are being left on war and stop producing them, uh, which optimizes uh, production massively. So um, another piece of work we've been, we've been working at um, was for a big um, jewelry and, and watches company, um, which was building on, uh, on this heritage. Um, and, and it was, leveraging similar technologies, but it's slightly different uh, user experience. And that was around the, um, the um, ownership of the watch over several uh, lifetimes. So um, this company produces super high-end watches um, and, and those are meant to be transferred uh, from father to son. Um, and, and so this company was, uh, basically they digitized their entire archive um, of uh, ownership transfer between between owners. And when we, we were buying that watch, we were not just buying the watch, we were also buying the, the entire history of that watch. Maybe a celebrity would have owned that, you know, owned that watch. And so you you could you could start creating new value out of that uh, of that asset just because you knew that. And and so again, um, users can can inform um, you know how garments are are used, or how assets are used in the real in the real world. But they can also affect the value of those products. So they, they could also change the the perception of the value of those products in the aftermarket. And um, yeah, and one of the good news of, of of that history is that one of the companies that we were working with um, that was you know helping us tracking down the the, the usage of those garments. Uh, literally this week, uh, it's called Eon, and it's been acquired by Microsoft, and they have this ambition to uh, connect 400 million uh, garments to to the internet uh, in the next two years, which is which is amazing. So this means that uh, we are getting there. We are uh, getting to a point where we will start getting those informations by users. Will then that that will then change uh, completely. Um, the way we approach those garments. Uh, in, in theory, we could, we could sh shift from consuming to start investing in, in garments, right? And even, even the consumer behavior could change thanks to the fact that we have that data. 
Thank you, Sergio. Uh, just another question. With the EO project, are we talking about Internet of Things? Um, that's a good question. It's, it's not necessarily, um, so the, the RFID filaments are passive kind of trackers. They're not active kind of trackers, but you, yeah, they, they do connect um, to the internet in, in some ways. Um, the way in which they connect is through a standard that has been uh, developed. Um, and, and the internet of things would be more connected to the antennas and, and the, the sensors that would have to read um, those, those tags. But yes, it, it is in a way, a sort of an internet of things kind of application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergio. And uh, I'm curious, uh, Sveta, you work with uh, many startups, and I'm curious to know um, how do you help your students or the startups in understanding user needs during the circular business model creation? And um, are your students or startups using any advanced technology in their concept? Well, I, I mentor different kinds of students and startups. Uh, within University of Trento, I, I teach uh, in School of Innovation and I am mentoring Startup Lab. So we have students that are master level or, or PhD level students who want to understand how to build up a startup. But already between master level and PhD students, you have a huge difference um, in approach. Uh, to, to this um, startup lab where, where they are basically playing while creating a startup. But on the other side, there is also an institution, uh, uh, probably you are familiar with EIT Raw Materials, and they organize summer schools uh, in Trento. So I, um, in the past three years, I've been following students both uh, actually researchers because they're strictly PhD level researchers who participate in those summer schools. And there we have a quite different uh, approach uh, because it's not just that we are learning how to build a startup from scratch and you know starting from idea um, validation uh, of uh, evaluating our ideas, then students usually jump into solution because they think they have the most amazing solution, but but practically they don't understand that the problem maybe doesn't exist. So here the situation is quite reverse because we have uh, PhD level researchers who are um, uh, doing the research in the raw material field. So industry comes with, uh, so I come from the industry side in that sense, but on the other side, I also work in uni at a university. And then we expose them to real challenges that we are facing in industry. So um, how would you solve this problem? Yes, they have a great solution. Of, un unfortunately, this school lasts only 10 days, so they don't manage to develop uh, really a technology or, <laughs> um, but they have a, a quite interesting ideas. Uh, they, they are quick thinkers. But the problem is that their ideas are sometimes quite hard to, um, commer uh, to I don't know, to, to put them uh, on the market and uh, to, to make them sustainable in financial terms. So yes, it's a great solution, but um, you're, <laughs> you're gonna end up being bankrupt. I mean, who's gonna pay this? So we are playing uh, through the set of, uh, uh, these courses, and um, I am I'm happy if students um, under uh, if at the end of the course, if students are able to understand uh, and to op observe things differently. But on the other side, um, uh, because I am uh, about to complete PhD. Uh, double degree PhD in computer science. So I work in artificial intelligence. And this is very interesting that you are mentioning because we were uh, applying uh, artificial intelligence in circular economy exactly in one of the projects quite similar. So um, uh, RFID and uh, internet of things and artificial intelligence in uh, circular economy. So um, there are endless, uh, I mean, there are many opportunities, right, for, for uh, implementations in all kinds of fields. And usually because of this, I'm, um, I'm mentoring students who are studying ar either artificial intelligence, so those kind of startups, 
But on the other side, I, I'm both engineer and psychologist. So, you know, I end up doing some social research <laughs> because of the psych psychological side. But I think that my not only personal, but also professional responsibility is to uh, explain to them the basic concepts. What are the sustainable development goals if I'm uh, working with uh, bachelor and master level students? And to my surprise, the first year when I was doing this, I thought that every single student is gonna, going to teach me more about the sustainable development goals, blah, 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 we already know. No, they, they were like, no, what's that? So, uh, I mean, I was shocked that we are not talking uh, about sustainable development goals, importance of sustainability, circular economy, not to say when I was learning Italian uh, and I wrote a small homework, a teacher said, I, I wrote Economia Circolare and she, she said, uh, you know, in Italy, we don't say it this way. I said, I'm afraid you do. <laughs> she said, oh, maybe it's a specific thing. So I don't know this word. So we should really educate uh, also students, but, uh, but also our friends, uh, neighbors about circular economy. And as I said, within a couple of years, it will become mainstream. But anyway, um, uh, uh, you are now uh, pointing out this question as if we are talking only about the um, uh, user-centered approach. But I am in industry, I work with businesses. So I'm business to business, it's not business to consumer. Uh, it's not always, uh, it's not always, this is not always the only challenge. But I think, uh, so, so as I said, and now I, I went in many different areas, but as I said, bottom line, regardless of the, the structure of the startup and, and the field uh, of innovation that we are talking about, I think uh, changing uh, to, to business, changing business models and innovating these business models means also uh, changing from ownership structure to uh, performance-based ones. So um, performance-based pain, pain models also, payment models, because this is the instrument that we can play with um, uh, in translating those products designed to reuse into attractive uh, value propositions, not only in circular economy, I'm talking also about applications. Uh, I, I co-founded a startup in artificial intelligence that is um, in, in emotional intelligence uh, field, so has nothing to do with circular economy. And even there, I see that business models are shifting uh, in, in and going into this, in this direction, into this performance-based uh, payment models. This is something to also consider, maybe. Maybe, I don't know if I answered your question. I was like going everywhere, I hope so. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you already mentioned, but I want to ask um, a little more detail about that. How we can lead an uh, innovation idea uh, with the I market, uh, with the I market potential to commercialization on, or to the market? And this is, I mean, uh, it's interesting question, but it's difficult to answer because I think this is the key to success. I mean, if if, if we all knew the, the the answer to this question, we'd be multimillionaires now. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's the key to entrepreneurial success. So it's not really an easy question to uh, an easy an easy thing to answer. I just know from experience that even if you have the most innovative technology. Uh, and you want to jump into a new market where there is need. Mm, if there, if there is not, if nobody was working on the awareness before, you are coming like an alien. I mean, you are talking on relation Italy and you know Serbia. It's not that far away. Croatia, mm, yeah, you know Italy. It's there. You know where they eat pizza. Yeah, it's close. They come here to the seaside. But Serbia, oh my God, they're aliens. Because those technologies are not uh, the 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 how to say the market is not ready. Because there are a bunch of other problems that are uh, on the list of priorities before uh, you know talking about circular business models. Now I, I see some changes, and I've been also invited to to work as a mentor in one uh, uh, innovation fund of Serbia. Uh, so I see that that they are moving a little bit. But on the other side, other markets, they have a huge problem of, um, I don't know, uh, end of life tires um, or uh, sludge disposal problems, very concrete topics. 
and uh, and uh, you have technology, but the implementation process and the commercialization, the technology transfer is not. It's um, it's it's more a uh, bureaucratic problem, right? I mean, not always. It's it's also a technical problem. But uh, but when you already have a patented technology, sometimes it's uh, challenging to implement uh, uh, the technology because of the other issues, the laws and regulations, and uh, and so on. Thank you, thank you, Sveta. Well, uh, Ma Max, uh, for you, what are the key challenges in uh, digitalization to address uh, in order to realize the potential opportunity? Well, I think that uh, <laughs> in, in, in few words, it's a user interface. I mean, how people could, could uh, know what happening in, in with, with the data which is circulating regarding the um, technologies used uh, in the field of, of circular economy. What I'm trying to say is, uh, for example, the, the example that Sergio mentioned before, or also uh, Sveta, um, if you are collecting data from garments uh, through RFID or something, whatever technology, companies are able to access to this data. But what happened with uh, users? What I'm trying to say is from my, from my point of view, the most important key is uh, critical consumption, the possibility of the uh, end consumers to take decisions. And the, the way of uh, take the right decision is to be informed. Then uh, I think that we should uh, work much more in the field of user interface. In, in, I'm, I'm using this, uh, this expression, but I'm trying to say it's something in, 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 uh, in a broad, uh, 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 sense of, of user interface. I mean, how people could access to this information. We have a big problem at uh, world level regarding the digital divide. We have a, a very um, big problem regarding people, a lot of people in the world that is not able to access to information. And this is a a very big challenge for us, I think, because in order to use technology to improve the situation regarding circular economy, I think we, we need first to give the possibility to people to be informed, to take the right decision. Because I, I remember a, a, an example of a, a small research I did in, in some years ago regarding the uh, recycling plastics. And um, at the end of the research was clear that recyc uh, recycling plastics is much more expensive than use uh, virgin plastics. Then why you need to <laughs> pay more to do the same just because you want to uh, recycle plastic? And then the, the key I think is uh, critical consumption is to be uh, conscious that the impact of, of the use to continue to use plastics from the beginning. Um, then uh, trying to um, answer your question, I think that the, the, the way to uh, arrive to um, uh, use the, the potentiality of this digitalization to our world is to give the people the possibility to access to this information. And then we need to work much more in how people access to this information. Thank you, Max. Thank you very much. Uh, Sergio, last question for you also. Um, in your opinion, uh, what technologies are best positioned to tackle the circular economy and uh, why? So, um, yeah, I don't believe there is one single uh, technology that can, you know, enable it. At the, at the end of the day, we're talking about a very complex system. Um, but but there is something that we reference quite a lot at Ario, and and this is this idea of the circular plumbing. 
uh, where the plumber is the one that you know fixes the tubes at, at home. Um, and so the circular plumbing is um, you know those those foundational and usually unsexy kind of technologies that companies don't really like to work at, uh, nor nor startups usually. Uh, but that enable um, that enable those kind of user experiences that Max was was mentioning actually because because you cannot you can't you cannot really uh, create a user experience if you don't have enough information for example I, I agree 100% that you have to um, you know push the the gently push the behavior of the user towards some directions but but you have to have uh, some informations to do that. And that was, I mentioned before that application that was meant to analyze the use of garments. And that was, uh, the idea was to analyze those data to then prompt the user and push them gently towards uh, more uh, conscious behaviors, which, uh, we, you know, gives them more um, uh, critical uh, understanding of their shopping behavior. Um, and so I, I mentioned before, like digital identity technologies, uh, or like platform standards that allow for data interoperability between companies and, and even, even institutions. Uh, there is, the European Union is working on uh, this project uh, called the International Data Spaces, which is um, a, 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 a central, um, you know, a central database for everything that circulates, that everything which is connected, which is an amazing piece of technology, although very foundational and very unsexy. Um, but but there are other technologies. Um, for example, I um, you know in my years I've I've seen uh, a lot. So from you know, everything that reduces the complexity of the supply chain um, uh, today today the supply of products is is a very slow and and long process. Um, it takes years for a product from from you know from design to manufacturing. So um, I, th I think Max mentioned. Um, like um, digital manufacturing, uh, industry 4.0, and you know, just in time, for example, just in time production allows you to avoid overstocking. Like um, big fashion companies, and I, and I use fashion a lot because I, I, you know, I come from many many years of experience in that. But that happens everywhere. Uh, most companies uh, suffer from overstocking products. You you try to predict with artificial intelligence and machine learning how much a product will sell. But you never really know how how much this product will sell. If we could change that to so just in time manufacturing, um, that that would allow um, you know for better production. And that that's just reduction, so it's it's not really circular. Um, but uh, but for example, like um, like we we came across this this filament, and in this case, it's a technology applied to materials. Uh, which would allow, and, and we use that to design a, a new kind of shirt. Uh, that shirt was, was stitched together with a kind of thread which can dissolve in the microwave. So if you think about it, you could sell a shirt um, as a service and then, and then you know, recapture the shirt, put in a microwave, disassemble it so that the sleeves come, you know, fall off and, 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 the, and the neck come, you know, you can take it apart and update it with uh, new, new, new pieces or, or change the color of a part of it. And, and so in this case, a materials innovation would allow a new kind of consumption of that, of that product. And, and another, um, um, it, 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 and it's not just like crazy technologies. Um, there's one project, which I'm super proud of actually, I was, I was involved in this um, H&M uh, project uh, where, and it's live, which is the reason why I'm talking about it, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to, but um, they, they ship millions, literally millions of, box, of boxes uh, a year. And, and they were like producing, you know, a huge amount of boxes. You, you, they have to pre-print all of those boxes or, or bags. And uh, we, we got to their uh, warehouse and we understood that the reason why they were doing it is because they, they wanted to have a perfect marketing campaign um, for for their bags, and and we changed that by just leveraging a digital tool attached to the printers that they're using in their warehouses. By just hacking that printer, we we were basically printing in real time the the labels that could personalize the bag uh, at the point of packing. So basically preventing them from from pre-printing uh, all of those boxes. 
So in sometimes just using creativity, as I said before, designers can help with that. Um, you, you can you can you know um, use technologies to to do some circular initiatives. Thank you, thank you very much, Sergio. I was lying about the last question because we have another question actually, and for all of you. And if you can, in a phrase. So the question is, uh, is if you could work on a brief for a client that represent a perfect circular project for you, uh, what uh, would it be, uh, Max? Hmm. I don't know if I will answer directly what you want, <laughs> but uh, more than a client, I say the, the healthcare system could be a good client to, to introduce circular economy. Um, I mean, should be the first one probably, because I think that uh, many of, uh, I, I will be very short. I, I want to say that changing our, um, our way of life, we could reduce a lot of uh, spend spending in, in, in healthcare, then I think that healthcare could be the uh, first, uh, the first uh, client in which introduce the concept uh, to uh, improve in a, in a very broad way, the, the situation of the, of the population. I'm, I'm quite interested in, in, in the final users, uh, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Sveta? I muted <laughs> myself. Uh, wow. I also don't have a very concrete answer you know, to this question. Um, I'm not sure because I work in many interesting, so many projects, and they're all interested and they are kind of a perfect, I mean, in theory, uh, they, could, they could be. Uh, a perfect circular um, uh, project, and uh, and uh, but in reality, implementing those projects is not always uh, the easiest uh, task. But I think this is the challenge, and uh, I mean, this is what drives me, and this is what uh, what I like about circular economy. So um, I really don't have answers. I mean, the fact that I have my own, that I have started up my, uh, that I co-founded a startup uh, in uh, artificial intelligence, I would probably uh, play on that card and go in that direction by using these technologies. And now in which field, uh, I mean, uh, you can check my, my, my startup and see what am I doing. I don't want to do pro promotion here. Uh. Thank you, Sveta. And uh, before to uh, pass to Sergio, I want to ask if there are any questions to audience. And uh, Sergio, it's your turn now. Okay, so I, I'll quote something that a colleague of mine at Adio just recently mentioned at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation Summit, just because I thought it was the perfect idea. So I, I, I'll, take him, I'll take it from him. Uh, he's Chris Grantham and he's our Circular Economy Portfolio Director. And, and, and his idea of the perfect brief is that um, a big, a, a really big corporate would come to us and with the ambition to test new business models and give us the freedom, like carte blanche, uh, to create a new venture and and prototype their future, uh, you know, their future value proposition uh, at the intersection of uh, you know culture, local skills, like local local materials, new services, uh, maybe on-demand technologies and such, you know, uh, all of that, and. Um, and, and let them experience what it means to, to innovate uh, in that space. So uh, yeah, big, big corporate with big ambitions. Thank you, Sergio, thank you also to you. Um, I think we don't have any questions, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm about to close. So yeah, we, we have come to the end of our session today. But before closing the, the day, I want to remember that uh, tomorrow we will talk about the food system in the, the, for the future with uh, Metalda Reo from UAV, uh, Franco Fascio, University of Gastronomic uh, Science, and uh, Sonia Cantone from IREN. So thank you, thank you very much to all uh, our guests and see you soon. 
Thank bye. you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Thanks. Bye.